Now, there are some things that are commercial. Lots of commercial stickers are available. And these are all things that I, I carry around in my journaling bag because I journal pretty much every single day. And I've gotten into, I'm going to show you lots of examples of this later, but I've gotten into adding little bits of art into my writing journal because that's primarily what my journal is, is for writing. And I've gotten into adding little bits of artistic things into my journal pages. And the reason I do that is because it gives, kind of gets me started, gets me going. So I bought a bunch of these stickers and these are from the Happy Planner stickers. So these are all commercial stickers. And you know, sometimes when I'm not in the mood to do anything else, I'll just look through here and I'll find something that applies to the day and I'll just pull it out and stick it in the journal. And that's fun to do. These are weekly planner stickers. Honestly, I don't use these very much. I don't use a planner in this way, but uh, some of the stickers in here, cause there's a ton, there's a ton of them in here. Some of these are, are really kind of fun to use to embellish other things. So I don't use them the way that they're intended to be used, but yeah, some of them, like these little circles down here, these are really fun to use. So. Um, and here's another one. These, I love these, the little bitty stickers. And again, there's a whole bunch of stickers that come in this. And these I got in the bookstore. I got at Barnes & Noble in the, the bookstore in their section where they were uh, getting ready for their selling planners and, and calendars and all that kind of stuff for the new year as it was turning over. Now you can make your own stickers, which I think is really fun to do. I love making my own stickers. And so this is actually a video, I think here on YouTube at one point, I did these, I think maybe a couple of years ago. And so this is just Avery label paper. This is 22, 22817. And so this is sticker, uh, sticker paper meant to go through your inkjet printer. And um, so I just did a whole bunch of painting on them, painting techniques. There's two different ones here. Colors are similar, but they're two different techniques. And then you can just peel, you, you act like it's just one sheet of paper, but then you just peel the sticker off and stick it in, you know, in your journal or whatever. So, We'll just pull out my journal here. This is my current journal that I'm working in. And I'm just going to come back here to a random, random page and just stick this in here. Which normally I do a little bit more planning than just randomly sticking through stuff throughout the book. But that way you can kind of get the idea. And besides that, I ripped it off, so I might as well use it. And then all of these painty in-betweens can be used as well. So you can cut those into shapes or use those. So those are a lot of fun to do. You can also buy this paper in just big sheets and uh, without the perforations or the, the partially die cut pieces like the circles or whatever shapes you have. I have several of these like ovals and circles and so forth. But you can get the, the plain sticker paper just in a, a sheet or label paper and you can do treat the whole page just like this with a painting technique or jelly plate printed or whatever and then you can cut the shapes up as you want or cut them into strips and use it like tape so that's another really fun thing to do uh let's see another thing you can do is let's see i'm just checking my um punches just looking at my my cheat sheet I've got here. So you can take things like this kind of stuff. So this these are pages that I took, pulled out of an old ledger. And these can the, the paper is very, very fragile. But if you coat them with um, 
clear gesso or coat them with transparent or translucent paints, then that becomes, and the same thing with dictionary pages like these, these are pretty thin and fragile, but if you coat them with some paint, then you can do some pretty cool things with those, like use your punches. So I have a couple of punches here, just a couple of examples. Trying to, trying to get the light off of them. Okay, there. So you can use punches. I have, I don't have very many punches, but I really like these two. I only buy punches in shapes that I really, really like that I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of. And then I will punch those shapes out. So, and again, these are super thin papers. So when you're doing really thin paper like this, if your punch doesn't work, put a piece of printer paper, copy paper behind it and punch through the copy paper or scrap paper. And, um, and the piece that is the thin paper at the same time. This is scrap paper right here. Okay, this is just scrap paper. This was stuff that I was coloring something else and it, you know, the color went off the edges and it just created this. So, you know, I mean, this is literally, this is scrap paper. And then here's some of the paper that I was using underneath these so that I could punch this really fine paper. And so I'll, I'll save those and use them for something. So use your punches and punch out things, again, from the papers that you've created. They're really fun to do that with. Um, some other things that you can do that, some other kinds of papers that you might consider using. This is an old textbook. I showed you a piece of this earlier. These are leftover bits of deli paper when I was jelly plate printing, these are just clean up things. They're not worth much of anything until you look at them with different eyes. And then you go, oh, well, I could use those for creating my own ephemera, right? So I'll show you some of those that I did. Just keeping myself kind of organized. <laughs> yeah, if you knew my studio, you'd understand how laughable that is. Uh, you can use your stamps and you can stamp tissue paper. Now, this particular tissue paper happens to be the Tim Holtz plain tissue paper. And I have it someplace here. Here it is. So this happens to be Tim Holtz tissue paper. This is plain. He has a lot of patterned tissue also, but this is the plain stuff. Even with a, the elephant that I stamped on there that I didn't stamp very well. So <laughs> yeah, it's waiting for something. But this is not like your regular tissue paper. And um, so it's a, it, it is a little more substantial. I find I really like that tissue paper but it's still nice and, and thin. So these are just various stamps that I stamped and then colored. So these have all been colored using gelatos and then just rubbing over them with my finger. So yeah, and some of these I stamped twice, like this one, for example. This one I stamped two times in two different colors of ink and then just with scissors, just cut them out. So those are all ready to put in whatever it is I wanna use them for. So stamp tissue paper. You can stamp the tissue paper that comes out of a shoe box or out of a, um, um, that comes in a shirt box or any other place that it comes from. You can certainly do that as well. You don't have to use the, the tissue paper that you purchase. These are old papers. This is an old music, old music paper. And these have all been stamped. This is a commercial set of um, two commercial stamps. These are Diane Reevely stamps. So the body was one thing, the head was another. She had feet, but I didn't have enough paper. This is dictionary paper, but I stamped them together and then cut them out. Now this paper is very fragile. And so that's why I had to keep it in a, um, a little baggie. I have to keep it in here. These have all been colored with gelatos or 
uh, the like this is gelato. This was actually painted paper to start with. And then I like to carve my own stamps. Let's see, I'll show you these. Before I show you those, I'll show you. Uh, yeah, these are these are all from the same set or from sets of Diane Reevely stamps. All these little house houses and this. This is from her one of one or two of her sets of stamps. I don't remember which, but these are all these were painty papers. Okay, these were um, dictionary paper that I had already colored, you know, they were just leftover bits and pieces of that. Dictionary paper and stuff like that. These other ones, these were hand carved stamps. And so this one is this one. Now I have, um, I have a video over at howtogetcreative.com, which is a membership website. We have classes of all different kinds. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But um, if you are a member there and you can try it out for a dollar for a month and then there's a monthly membership fee or you can become a member for a whole year and that means that you're a VIP member. And I'll tell you more about that as we get going. But one of the classes that I have there is on uh, how to make marks with stamps and simple print plates. And that is, I show you in there exactly how to make, carve your own stamps. And uh, if you've never done that, it's a very step-by-step -step sort of tutorial. And it's a lot of fun to do. So these were all stamped on, these were stamped on music paper. Okay, so that is where this came from. And this flower is these stamped on music paper and then I use gelato which is um, which are these kinds of they're kind of a crayon sort of pigment pigment stick it's water soluble you could also use for things like that you could I mean you could use anything you could use colored pencils you could use I would use something that was a dry sort of a dry kind of medium that you can blend with your finger uh, these scribble sticks would um, would be another option rather than this is old music paper and if you start using a lot of water with these old papers you might find that they um, that they kind of wrinkle up and become difficult to deal with but yeah use your stamps and stamp on some of your old papers or new papers you can use commercial stamps or you can use hand carved stamps for sure and if you want to learn to, you know, make your own, then check out that class over at howtogetcreative.com. Uh, another thing that I love to do, and that is, these are photographs from my phone, because I love snapping pictures of things. This is an art journal page I did. This is a picture of uh, one of my crazy cats. My, his name is Chance. This is Charlie laying on his back. This is Chance looking at a picture that Dee Dee Willingham here on YouTube um, did. It's a mixed media piece and she used his image and she made a small poster and, and then she sent, I can't remember, I think she sent the original to me and so he's sitting there looking at it. So this is Chance looking at a picture of himself. And, um, and this is uh, my granddaughter's little kitten He's a little bitty, little teeny thing there. He's now a great big old cat. But I love, and this is a picture she took and sent to me. But I love to take these images. So these were, you know, great big images. I take them out of my phone. I just drag them out of my phone onto the computer or, you know, send them to myself with email or whatever I want to do. And then I just open a Word document. My I am a Mac user, so I use Pages. So I open Pages, and then I just drag the pictures from wherever they are on my computer, drag them into this blank document, and then I just resize them, size them all down, and I'll print out a whole bunch of them. And uh, then I can just come in and I use, you know, scissors, and I'll cut out the images and stick them in my journal. Sometimes that's just to document a day or a special event, but I love to do this. And sometimes I'll take a picture of an old picture 
Uh, so I use the copy of the picture in my journals. That way it doesn't matter if something happens to it. But I love doing this kind of thing. And I don't know if you can tell, but this isn't even printed out well because my printer is in need of, uh, it's getting to the end of its ink cycle, so it needs to have new ink. I, for my journal stuff, I don't care. Or for, you know, because I can always come in here with colored pencils or something else and I can add some color to it. So if the color doesn't print exactly right, I don't worry about it. But I love having, uh, using my own photographs or my own images and making copies of those for, uh, for myself. Another thing that is fun is I like to buy magazines. This is one of my very favorite magazines. I love the, the um, articles in it. I love the images in it. And on the back cover, they almost always have these great illustrations on the back cover. And so, because I've purchased it, and I'm only going to use it for myself, I usually will stick it on my copier, my scanner, copier, and then print out the image. Now, I did an absolute, you can see it's a deplorable rendition of this because I wasn't very careful with covering up my scanner bed. So, you know, that was, you know, I didn't do a very good job. That doesn't mean that I won't use this because I will. I'll cut it out and then I'll just put this in my journal and then embellish it or put it on a card or whatever I want to do. The, this image is great, so is that one. This is good, but then you can see how <laughs> these didn't print well, and that was my fault, not the printer's fault. Uh, and here's another uh, thing I love to do with stamping, <coughs> and that is to use the security envelopes. These are envelopes that um, we get in the mail here in the United States. If you're watching overseas, I don't know whether you get these or not, but they're patterned so that the theory is you can't see through the envelope. But the patterns are really pretty and come in lots of different colors. And then this is a piece of old, <coughs> pardon me, this is old scrapbooking paper. And pardon me, I gotta get a drink. This is old scrapbooking paper. You can see the design under there, but it was something that I was never going to use in its original form. And so I painted over the top of it. This is paste paper. And so with both of these, I consider those found papers. <laughs> I consider them found papers. Yes, I do. So with both of those, what I've done is I have used a stamp. These are hand carved stamps. And I'll show you them. Some of them you've seen. This one is the same flower that I showed you just a minute ago. That's this one. And so I've stamped those. On, these are on the security envelopes. So you can see that's just the outline. And then I've just detailed it with a little bit of Tombow watercolor marker. This one is this stamp that I hand carved. I drew it and hand carved it. These are out of the scrapbook paper that I painted over. So you can see that, that you can't even tell that it wasn't, uh, I'm going to say it was an ugly scrapbook paper. Yeah, because it was. These are, some of these have had things done to them. Some of them have not. This one's had a little embellishment done on it. This this one was actually a commercial stamp. So these some of these are commercial stamps. I'll show you the ones, all the ones that are commercial stamps. And some of these I have added. Um, I'll show you the stamps. I pulled them out so you can see them. These are old Stampin' Up stamps that I bought at a garage sale. So there's that one and this one. So these all came from uh, Stampin' Up and these came from a garage sale. And then this one, this little one. I don't even know if these are in the same, go in the same set. They say $19.99 on those. I think they're all $19.99 stamps, so they're old. And, uh, but these are all done 
These are all done on the security envelope paper. Here's a couple more of these little little bitty flowers. I love using clusters of things in my journals and so those are all done on the security envelopes and again some of them detailed with um, some Tombow markers and uh, a little bit of gel pen but they're perfectly fine with just the stamping them on on the security envelope and colored the center in. Here's some more of one of the, that same stamp. These have been stamped on the, the painted uh, scrapbook paper. Yeah, nothing's been done to those. Here's another stamp that I carved, and this is this one. And then I cut them out. These are just hand cut. I stamp a bunch of this kind of stuff, and then I'll just sit down and, uh, and cut them out you know, while I'm watching TV or something. So this is that same paper, the same scrapbook, ugly scrapbook paper. And then I told you how much I love houses. So here are a couple of houses that I carved. These are actually from the class, I think, that I referenced earlier. This one is carved uh, or stamped on the uh, security envelope which it doesn't even look like that, does it? And then I just colored in the windows and the door. This is from the ugly scrapbook paper. This is the ugly scrapbook paper. This one is the ugly scrapbook paper. Both of these are the ugly scrapbook paper that was transformed and a little marker added. And this one was, was on the, um, security envelope. So again, those are the stamps and these delightful little house shapes are just a lot of fun for using for all different kinds of different kinds of things, you know. Hopefully you're seeing I uh, getting ideas for different things you can look at your stash, look at your supplies differently. Um, this will save you money if you make some of your own stuff, you know. And then you have the pride of making it yourself and the fun of making it yourself. But who doesn't want to save some money? Because I bet you have a lot of these kinds of things on hand. Not the same thing, but similar things.